안녕하십니까? 골담 치과병원 치과부철과 김학규입니다. Hello, I'm Kim h a k y u of the g o l d a m Dental Clinic. Last time you look at the screw loosening and fracture. This time we will look at abutment and implant complications. So I'm going to talk about abutment and then implant fracture and clinical considerations. 所以，在这个方面，我们要讨论的是，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所以，所
try to grind it and remove it. Now, in, in the SR kit, there's AIR tip. So in a reverse direction, you engage, and the left, right side slowly, without much force, if you loosen it, then you actually can smoothly remove, but it's not always the case. Then using ejector in various directions, uh, you could hit it or using forcep and using leverage, you take it out and mostly it take, comes out. But if it still stays in place, like in the past, loop bar can be connected to the abutment and without damaging the implant, you put the line and again use AR tip, then it uh, mostly can be removed. So after removing it, so usually fractured implant or abutment screw shows that there is always reason. So for this case also, the angle was uh, moved more on the lingual side and on the opposite side, number 10 and uh, 14th, there was scissor bite. So it wasn't, there's was not much of a crucial force and she was chewing mostly on the left side where there's implant. So two or three times of collision force and fatigue uh, fracture potential was uh, very clear. And she was 33 when I first show, she came first time. And after eight years, she's 72. And first it was rigid upon cement type, although I did not make it. And I saw possibility of losing a screw fracture, abutment fracture for, so for continued retining transfer abutment PMP based ER type was what I delivered. But with the change of times, trans abutment monotic uh, material full zirconia was uh, created for her. So I hope that uh, the implant can age with her and hopefully she can use until she dies, but she might come back then uh, maybe I hope, just hope that at time also I could only remove, change the prosthesis. So another fracture case, and you can see the reason for the upper case, as you can see on the pellet, it's placed a bit palatally and cusp angle is rather steep. So bulloxism or cusp angle, if it's steep, then if it's create natural forces, central occlusal, there's a force load, but there could also be high lateral force. And if it's big as uh, natural teeth, then buckled uh, hinder will be also becomes high, the joint, there is a lot of stress, and there could be fracture. So when I remade it, then a smaller prosthesis cusp angle was also lowered. And at the time for six, seven years, um, it's uh, used okay. So it's again referred case. And the bottom case also referred case. So it was uh, moving, so I removed it. So it was full zirconia bridge. And for that case, PFM or gold, unlike that, for porcelain, if there's a fracture, gold, it wears down, but for zirconia, it doesn't wear down. So occlusal assessment needs to be very delicate, otherwise implant uh, takes a lot of stress load. And that result in screw loosening and abutment could have a fatigue fracture. So before that, I removed it, and for the back teeth, there was also cement loss. If two splinted crown, one abutment, if there's cement loss, then it uh, becomes a big a cantilever bridge and inevitably will result in fracture. So for abutment to reduce abutment fracture, for OSTEM, a lot of efforts have been made for so for about 10 years ago to reduce this type of fracture the abutment side design and materials were changed so for the uh, inside diameter was extended on the abutment and screw size uh, head size was uh, made smaller and abutment internal diameter was extended we need to know this because by 09 08 in the past if you had this type of abutment the screw that you use if the screw is loosened then look at the head shape and its angle and with the new screw it's not really compatible so if possible you might find matching screws to uh, re reduce uh, possibility of any fracture or loosening. So besides this uh, design, 
Then when we select as a dentist abutment, thicker diameter abutment is better. But even if wide with other abutment, emergency prick bar file or within uh, some range, thicker titanium abutment has a stronger f uh, fracture resistance. So as I said, full zirconia in case of that type of abutment, especially internal type and connection area, zirconia is a lot of uh, put under stress and that could result in fracture. So I do not recommend it. So if you need to think about aesthetics, then tight link abutment can be used to connection titanium and then a uh, upper part zirconia so to improve the aesthetic, that type of abutment would be the recommendation. In the past, ready-made abutment, if it could not be used, then gold casting or MP casting abutment was used to create custom abutment. And with that, you could have good prognosis, but in internal connection, the connection side, by polishing it inside, the fit become could become weaker, then it could loosen the abutment, hence resulting in abutment fracture or implant itself. Uh, it could put in a, a very bad stress. So with the advancement CAT cam, rather than this type of abutment, Pre-milled abutment can be used, and this would be better in terms of fractures, res resistance, and for long-term pro implant prognosis. If there are some people that use third-party abutment for internal connection, then it might fit on your hands. But if you look at this photo, there is always a gap, especially especially on the internal connection side. Uh, this is very important. So rather than use third-party abutment, the company's quality pre-milled abutment uh, needs to be used to match the connection. And that is a way to ensure long-term uh, good uh, prognosis. When I talk about screw, but with adoption or, of implant system means uh, but, uh, also understanding about implant connection. So fracture or loosening means the abutment is, did not seat well and it's not a good fit and there is a stress put in and it becomes mobile. So for single case, you could use screw type, but for multiple case, if you use screw type, the angles, even if it's parallel, there could be sync, so it will not, it will be misfit. Hence, for internal connection of implants, then rather than screw type, cementation type or ER type prosthesis is better as it can have passive fit. Additionally, for internal connection, there could be sync down. So to compensate for that, uh, you, you take impression uh, on the impression level, uh, you take impression on the uh, head level, and you could just take an at one go uh, implant placement, but there could be error stacking up, uh, resulting in various adverse uh, events. So two-step impression taking is the recommendation. So you take implant level impression and then connect the abutment. In that side, even if there are you tightening and you can check again so in sync down or provision can be used for f continuing checkup so once it stabilizes uh, through that then uh, you take abutment impression the abutment implants uh, would not be under um, negative uh, bad loads and uh, on a long term it could be more fit and it could be more stable and uh, it would help uh, for better prognosis Then let's look at implant fracture. So this is very strong occlusive force patient with the uh, implant 20 years ago. So there could be on horizontal fracture and implant top side fracture. So for internal case also, uh, the depend if it's a smaller diameter implant used compared to ocular force, there could be this horizontal uh, fracture. So for this referred patient, 
what we can think is that for number 30s, although it's number 7, very small or low depth implant is placed for number 40s. At the back, it's external, number 7 external, but number 6, again, it's a smaller diameter uh, implant. So it's splinted and resulting in tearing. So we need a wider implant on the posterior side and for this bone loss uh, so the implant the small implant was removed and number six was internal bone level so ts implant number 40s number seven uh, for extraction it still has a usage so for number six external type and then splinted for resolution so after stable occlusion well, the remaining implant bone loss uh, was recompensated recomp with the cortical bone regeneration. So, after abutment is stronger than 4.0 internal connection uh, implant, then sometimes results in tearing. And the lower side, it's a rare case, but after one year of implant placement, she felt felt pain and the x-ray showed in the implant side wider abutment was forcefully put in so there's implant tearing resulting peri-implantitis and oh he or she had a bone loss so i had to remove it so internal conical implant crack showed that uh, could we think of we show various clinical result so for this internal level bone level implant was used and when first came she said there was uncomfort so she came in 2013 but there was no clinical evidence and so it was very hard to see what was wrong but it, uh, fortunately it was a type so i thought maybe there could be screw loosening and if you put in too much force, sometimes it results in uncomfort. So I opened it up and checked. And so there is a loss of preload and additional torque was therefore applied. So the screw was retightened and I adjusted the occlusion. Then she came back after a few years, about three years later, she said implant was moving and there was pain. So with hands, I could feel it's moving and x-ray also didn't look good. On the root side, there was, if there is a vertical root fracture, then there could be bone loss and there could be tear ring. Then the bone becomes thinner and it looks black on the x-ray. So here again, abutment, loosening, and to see uh, whether that is a possibility, I took uh, opened it up and saw it. And if it's torque, you should stop. But at some point, uh, it just becomes loose. That shows that third implant, by tightening the abutment, it becomes wider and torque is therefore we becomes weaker. So, written without microscope, I could s be sure of the tearing. So I said implant need be removed, and it was removed. After that, wider implant, TS implant, could be placed. But for this patient, the occlusion force was really strong. So external hexatype implant was used and it's uh, maintained quite well up to now. So for Koreans, especially if we have a strong uh, occlusion force, a master muscle, then you should go with wider implant if possible 4.0 diameter implant is more recommended or the internal side because of its structure if there's a strong occlusion force inevitably it could result in fracture hence one up as a system or us system like if butt joint needs to be there to uh, support the occlusion force and uh, using that would result in better results and also, if you look at just implant for internal connection, one piece abutment, the connecting uh, area and two piece abutment connection area is a bit different from the hex and non hex also. So you have your own preference, but if possible, be it if whether you use two piece or one piece or you whether you use hex hexa or two non hexa, a possible abutment implant needs to be good fit 
and it match well, and there could be sink down possibility. Hence, um, you should also do regular checkup every six year or every one month, one year. You open it up and retighten it and do occlusion adjustment. That is a must. Still, if the occlusion force is really strong, then to patient you need to educate the patient. So during the day, don't clench too much, and if that habits continue at night, if you see the muscle, if it's really tight and strong, again, educate the patient, use a bruxism splint or do botox injection. Now, full zirconia is mostly used, but for this type of uh, patient, if the occlusion force is too strong, then gold might be better option in terms of where other things um, could result in natural uh, crucial adjustment. So uh, changing material might be the better option. So summary, implant abutment, screw, and other uh, things for long-term stability, proper distribution, number and diameter of implants needs to be used, and restaurant-driven positioning should be used and used properly designed and manufactured implant uh, needs to be used. And after that, patient age and depending on the oral changes, you have to do adequate uh, adjustments and regular checkup. So up to now, we look at various implant-related complications. I hope uh, this has become uh, a good uh, learning opportunity, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.